this is a dream, which unfortunately has become kind of a nightmare. Because thanks to Texas weather, our budget has now imploded. Fortunately, we have some awesome sponsors like the sponsor of today's video, AG1, to help us out. So here's the deal. Years ago, I made a bet with my wife that if this little YouTube channel I had at the time hit 100,000 subscribers, I could build a shop on my land. At the time, we didn't have a home nor land, but fortunately, with a lot of hard work and an amazing offer for a job in Texas, we relocated from the beautiful island of Oahu to here in North Texas. Over time, we've exceeded that 100,000 subscriber benchmark and begun the work on this shop we are calling Molokai. Now, Molokai has been a roller coaster. When we hit that 100K benchmark, I got a few quotes from general contractors trying to figure out how much this thing would cost to build. And for this 40 by 50 shop, some quotes coming in even over $300,000. So that idea burned to the ground fairly quickly. So I try to figure out how to make this thing happen on a tighter budget. But I wasn't willing to compromise the size nor location of this shop. We found a local guy that knows his way around the concrete, built ourselves an engineered 40 by 50 foundation for a red iron frame building. In addition, we have about 2,000 square feet of flat work or driveway in front of the shop. And we laid the concrete for both the foundation and flat work and a tremendous amount of work went into getting that just Right, with the anchor bolts in place, we were ready for our metal building frame. But just before that building frame went up, we got thrown a pretty big audible, which is where our story starts today. Not ideal. This is supposed to be a fun update on Molokai and the shop progress, but uh, you take two steps forward, you get punched in the mouth and take four steps back because I'm gonna need a new roof on my house. So I'm taking a risk on the investment with this channel to hopefully return that investment in due time to a point now where a little bit of a risk. The playground, I just got my boys, probably gone, and uh, my roof. <sighs> got power lines snapped off at the base. Before we get too far into today's video, because it's gonna be an exhausting one, it's time to treat myself. Treat myself to my daily dose, my daily habit, my foundational nutrition, our sponsors over at AG1. What AG1 is, you've seen them on the channel before and likely you'll see them again because I legitimately love this stuff. It's a daily foundational nutrition supplement. It's a supplement that supports your body's universal needs like nutrient replenishment, gut optimization, stress management, and even immune support. Which is convenient for us because I have a kindergartner and a kid in daycare at different schools, which means we get every single sickness there is in a 100 mile radius around where we live. Now the formulation of AG1 is based on the latest science and maintains the highest quality of standard. In fact, it is tested for over 950 contaminants and is NSF certified for sport. It definitely helps me through the day, but one little benefit a lot of people don't talk about, this is so easy to mix up, that all you have to do is add just a little bit of water. Okay, it's all, it's full, it's full. <laughs> you don't need that much water, but okay. Bottoms up. And it does taste bad, it's actually pretty refreshing. There's a link in the description below where you can go to drinkag1.com slash Lone Star Hawaiian to score yourself an order. If you act now, you can get yourself five free travel packs on top of an entire one year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 with your order. Thank you again to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to it. Unfortunately, I can't show any more sweat. So uh, 
Let's go. We are gonna get stuff done today. This is going to be a little bit more of a construction base. And because we're gonna be lumbering around stuff, we're gonna need a truck to do it. That truck is completely useless at the moment. We saw in our last few videos, this rear tire, now it's a 37 by 13 and a half. Uh, yeah, I have half an inch of suspension clearance and then it tears the tire and fender to shred. Because the initial plan with this was to get our new bed sides on here, which we could clear these tires, but that came first and then this, and then yeah, it just snowballed out of control. So we need to clearance these things so we can actually use the truck. I'm getting very carried away with this cutting wheel. Nearly every vehicle of mine by now has gotten this treatment. And they cut out the perfectly beautiful stock bed side. If you guys wanna see details on that truck, there's an entire series, I'll link it below. time a little bit out of time my caja runner is now fully operational because we need the truck morning guys it's been about a week since uh, this crap happened, the playground went flying and uh, I got a pretty big bill coming. To replace the roof on this home, it's about 3,000 square feet. So reshingle it, new gutters, new downspouts, $49,000. I'm in the wrong business. But of course we do have insurance on the house, but given the storms in North Texas year after year after year, deductibles for hail and wind damage have just gotten ridiculous. So out of pocket, I'm looking at an additional probably 10 grand to get this thing taken care of. Inside the house, water actually did penetrate. A good amount of drywall is going to need some loving. I did not bank on having to fork out another 10 grand out of my savings. So this video series kind of became a bit more risky. So if you guys have not subscribed to the channel yet, nor hit that like button below, that's a way you can help me out because this became a lot more risky and I'm depending upon your viewership and the interest in this build to help it fund and keep going. Because if not, we might just be looking at a big concrete slab and that's it. <laughs> All right. What's going on here? Last night I came out and laid out the irrigation lines how they were before the slab was laid. Underneath this portion I actually ran the irrigation lines inside of a larger PVC pipe because at this point it'd be a lot easier to connect it versus having to burrow under. So we're gonna go ahead and reconnect our irrigation because it has been like 105 degrees all week. I have zero power to my irrigation box so none of the sprinklers work at all. So my idea is in the areas that we're done with, we're gonna go ahead and kind of bury the lines back in the ground, hook it all up. In the areas that we're still working around Ground, I'm gonna have it just kind of out of the ground and when the heavy equipment comes in we can grab it pull it out of the way I spin on the go back of concrete and I do this way you want a racetrack around the backyard yeah okay we're definitely gonna make some kind of a go-kart or dirt bike track pit bike track maybe that's why we have like 20 feet between the back of the slab and the fence so we can actually loop back around here go across the concrete and back around all the way down there a little hill lots of potential and opportunity here
Welcome back. It's been a while. We got a building skeleton, but we have a lot of other issues. Probably just some screen top sold today. They need to fill in those low spots where we put the irrigation in. So here's the catch. I have no idea with this new suspension setup if this truck can even handle a load of dirt. If the suspension drops enough, those tires are so big, it just might smash the fenders, so. I hope we can handle this. <laughs> Is that cool? I don't hear rubbing. Nope. Woo, good news, made it. We need some topsoil to kind of even out some of these areas over here, especially where I laid that irrigation. But it just so happens that perfect timing, this is the whole reason we are having to uh, get creative with our budget because my entire roof is coming off. I have four pallets of shingles for this house. Yeah. So it's being replaced. Gutters everything. What time's your game? Eight o'clock? Nice shoes. You can run so fast in them. Can jump higher, sprint faster, think smarter. Oh yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Given the state of our budget here, we're having to get really creative on what we're gonna be doing to save a little bit of money. So we have all of our gutters that were ripped off the house yesterday. The day before yesterday, I actually took off several sections because not all of our sections were completely damaged beyond repair. We uh, actually saved enough that's going to be repurposed for Molokai. We also have a few good downspouts we're going to be utilizing. So our gutters, we no longer have to pay for, for the shop. And what's also pretty dang awesome, the company that's going to be doing my roof on Monday is actually owned by my neighbor right there. And Daniel is freaking awesome because he realizes I do have the capability to do a lot of things with my own two hands. So he's allowing me to kind of knock out a list that'll save me a lot of money on this project, starting with the chimney. So beautiful. Oh, I love this place. Chimney's painted, guys. <laughs> it looks so good. So that color is the same color we're gonna be painting all of our eaves, but I need to wait until the new roof is installed prior to painting the eaves because we're putting a new drip edge on there. Shifting our attention back over here, just over the last several weeks, it hasn't rained a drop and the dirt's starting to pull away, but also eroding away quite a bit from this corner here. So I wanna start building that up. So this is not the end of our dirt work because this next week I'm gonna have probably 10 yards at least delivered and dropped right there. We need to get ready to get our fence put back in place. I don't know who built this fence, but if you did, well done. That was the hardest concrete I've ever had to chisel through. All the concrete is off of the poles. Now all we gotta do is wait for our dirt delivery. Who's ready for a new roof? This guy. Kind of excited, but not at the same time. I came to find out a few weeks ago, the storm that blew through that damaged my roof and so many other neighbors. There are several houses in the neighborhood that were just untouched and looked perfect. Those houses were done by my neighbor. Yeah, it's gonna be a good day, a loud day. Alright, the roof is off. Man, they knocked that out quick. You remember when we had that issue at the front of the house with the rocks nearly falling off from about 20 feet up? We're actually finding now, as this is now bare, there is, I don't know how many spots, just like that. What's interesting, it's all along where the starter strip would be. DR Horton build home, guys. Lesson learned. These guys just don't know how to build homes. Like, I don't know how to build a home, but I know better than this. Daniel absolutely killed it with this roof. The crew did a fantastic job and he threw in a few little goodies for me as well. Just being a cool dude. So the roof is complete. It's got class four impact rating, which should sustain a lot of the hail shenanigans we deal with here in North Texas. In addition, I have begun to paint 
my eaves. Yes, this color of eave is hideous. And it's important because with the shop, all the accents, the doors, the garage doors, things like that are going to be the same color as the house because it has to match. And because this is changing, gutters coming off, I have a chance to repaint my eave, including all my garage doors and stuff like that. So this is getting repainted. It's very good looking. I'm happy with that. So that's all been happening kind of behind the scenes. In addition, we got 20 yards of select fill delivered a couple of days ago. I really thought I could spread that 20 yards of dirt out with a wheelbarrow and a shovel. It ain't gonna work. So uh, yours truly went ahead and rented a mini dozer, which we're picking up right now, which is also a special time because this is the first time that our 2020 trail boss is actually going to tow something. A little bit pathetic, but this is the first time. I got our big boy pants on, guys. We are towing. to I promise I think I know what I'm doing. We've actually spread this around the building pretty well. What I'm gonna have some difficulty with is compacting this down and kind of grading it correctly. It's a learning process. We're getting a little bit smoother as far as dumping it and spreading it. Really what my own little, my own little skid loader. little bit too confident we knocked off the track a little bit frustrated so we're uh kind of propped up there in a couple two by sixes and a four by four and there's one bolt in there which is for the tensioner and it happens to be an inch and a half yeah i don't have one that big so off to tractor supply we don't go fast we only drive the speed limit ever let's go to tractor supply oh those garage doors look so much better yeah there it is Inch and a half. Thank you, tractor supply. Conveniently the closest thing to our house. I'm actually a little bit surprised with myself. That turned out really good. That's exactly where I wanted it to be. But we are far from done today. Like, way far from done. One, we gotta return the equipment, which will be later, but we are now focusing in on behind the shop, which is our fence. So we took four sections of fence down when we started this project. And I think I can put up at least three back in place. I wanna secure this area back off. And it ain't cool out today. It's. It's fairly warm. It all takes so long, but look at that. Oh, that's perfect. Trailer's out of the yard, even with just two seconds of fence. Final hours. So we used about four and a half hours on this bad boy. All right, tractor has been returned. We have two remaining sections of fence. I want to be able to remove this section or those two sections in the future without digging up concrete, cutting welds and all that fun stuff. So I've come up, I think, with my solution here. I was drawing this up when I was supposed to be paying attention in church. But we have our two remaining sections. This is just a rough sketch. And I'm going to kind of create a few different brackets. That way I can take those nuts and bolts out and remove those sections of fence later on but the most difficult part or thinking through this was this bottom section here so i'm going to concrete in the bottom post obviously but i wanted a slot 
or like a sleeved area where that post can actually drop in. And that's what this is kind of demonstrating. We're gonna dig out quite a bit more, put in a lot of concrete. That way we can slide that post in and out of that squared piece. Just control the height of that post. We're gonna go ahead and use a different type of bracket and run a larger bolt there through the center. That'll control how high that post sits and where everything bolts in together. And in theory, this is gonna work great, I think. So without further ado, let's find out. So 160 pounds of concrete in that fairly large hole. And I'm telling you guys right now, if I ever have to dig this pole back up, it's not being dug up. I'm cutting it at the base and starting all over again. I don't know about you guys, but I'm exhausted. This fence just burned an entire another day, but it's done. For, for the most part. We bolted it back up with our creative brackets. So in theory, I am able to take down two of those sections and pull that center post out. If and when there was something I need to pull into the backyard, I went ahead and touched it up with paint the areas I was grinding and welding. All honesty, I need to actually repaint the entire thing. It's very faded and starting to rust. So essentially we have these T brackets and there's nine of them that run across here, there, and there, and then again, there at the bottom. Now, if I need to get into the backyard, all I have to do is remove this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, and that bolt, same thing on the bottom, and then those sections of fence will pull out. And then this post, hopefully, should be able to lift out from that sleeve we created before we put that thing in the concrete. So that was a lot of work, but it looks good. It's level. I'm just happy to have that thing closed off from the back. I've hated that thing open. <laughs> well, it may not look like we did a ton in today's video, but it definitely feels like it. The biggest sigh of relief is behind me. The house is dealt with. The roof is replaced. All the eaves are painted. Garage doors are painted. Gutters and downspouts are all taken care of. In addition, the fence. I spent some time this morning restaining that fence line because because per my insurance policy, that has to be repaired and restained for me to get my money. We also got this thing all leveled out to select fill compacted down as best as we can get it. I'm actually really happy about this. And because a lot of you are asking about cost on a different elements of this project, like the metal building, the foundation, the flat work, things like that, we're gonna start a running total. So here will lie for the next foreseeable future, my life savings. So this list is gonna comprise all the costs that we're incurring. This is gonna hurt to look at. All right, so up until this point, we have our permit coming in at $375. Our foundation, that is all the grading work, the pad, the underlay, poly, all that fun stuff, the rebar, $35,577. Again, it was a very robust foundation, engineered foundation. We have our flat work, which is essentially our driveway coming in at $12,226. And our metal building frame, which you guys saw last week going up, custom metal building frame. This is with the erection or installation of that metal building frame coming in at $39,769. It is sickening seeing these amounts. These are expensive. Now at the conclusion of this video, again, we brought in 20 yards of select fill. We rented that Bobcat MT85, I think it's called. We had a bunch of miscellaneous fence hardware and things like that to get the fence back up. Now that came in at a whopping grand total. $800, which is going to put our grand total of this project to this point at $88,747. Now that's expensive. That's a really nice truck, but we need a place to put those trucks. So we are building this dream shop and we are keeping an eye on all of our pennies, especially because of all the crap we just went through. And keep in mind, when we quoted this out to general contractors, I had a few quotes back for upwards of $300,000 dollars we're doing much better than we are quoted so far we're sitting eighty eight thousand seven hundred forty seven dollars as it sits to this point we just placed our order for all of the roofing materials that are needed for this shop i was hoping to show you that in this video but it keeps getting pushed back and pushed back because we have to osb and asphalt shingle this roof to match that roof because H-O-A. And on that bombshell, that's gonna be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me on this roller coaster. We made it through. If you guys are enjoying this series and have not subscribed yet, feel free to scroll down, hit the subscribe button below, join the Ohana. But as always, until we meet again, guys, y'all take care. Ahoy ho, aloha.
Bill Brown. <laughs>